Hey witches, we're back with another episode of Witch Life. Now, uh, last time um, I said that I was going to concentrate on colors, but I forgot a very important, crucial step. Um, please forgive me for that. I'm not used to training brand new witches um, or people that do not know, um, do not have some type of foundation in witchcraft. Um, I'm used to advising um, people that have already kind of developed some sense and, and that have already kind of delved into it. But do not fear. We are actually right where we need to be at this point. Um, and that's a good thing that I'm doing these every week it gives me a chance to actually um uh plan out exactly where we're supposed to be and i realized that one of the main things that i forgot to teach you guys which you will see as uh stated in the title card it's deciding what type of witch you are now just like doctors there are many different types of witches um, as I've said many times, I am a necromantic witch. If you ask me to do earth magic, it's not going to work well. Um, I do not do earth magic. That is not where my power lies. So, um, just like a, a witch of the air is not going to, um, have the command of the dead the way I do. And I don't really mean it like command of the dead, but you know, works with the dead the way I do. Um, you know, a necromantic witch is not going to be great at love spells. Okay. So you really have to figure out what type of witch you are, what element you derive your magic from, and that will determine what type of witch you are, what you will be most proficient in, um, and what you're probably not going to have the most luck in. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that you will not be able to do it. Um, as a necromantic witch, because I have so many different spirits that I enable to do things, I can kind of cross a lot of boundaries with it. Um, but however, I myself cannot uh, enforce a money spell. Um, that's not where my power lays. I cannot bring, a, uh, bring forth or manifest a love spell. Again, that's not where my power lays, but spirits that do have that ability, do have that power, were that type of witch in life, can step forward, I can empower them, and they can make it happen for me. So let's discuss how you discover what type of witch you are. Now, this is going to be a homework assignment, so when you come back next week, we can start discussing um, the capabilities of, of each type of witch, okay? So... As I said, I am a necromantic witch. What does that mean? Where do I derive my power from? So my power comes from the energy. Energy created by the earth. Energy created by the air. But most importantly, my energy actually comes, derives from living things or created energy. What's created energy? Well, created energy is from electronic items, they create energy. Uh, created energy also comes from things like crystals. It takes energy to press them into, combine them, press them into crystal forms, um, iron ores, especially diamonds. Diamonds take a, just so much energy and pressure uh, to combine them down to make that type of, um, to make that type of crystal. And that is where I derive my energy from. I can pull on that energy. I can pull the energy out of the air. Um, I can pull the energy out of the earth, but the, where I find my most concentrated power is through the energy of the universe, the energy from things that were created by the big bang theory. Um, and I know some people don't believe in it, which is don't really believe that people were created by God. So that's not a big deal for, um, the witches that actually adhere to, to what we teach. 
So um, that is where I derive my power. Now on the wheel, on the, and I call it a wheel, although it's, it's the pentagram. On the wheel, I would be here, okay? I would be um, the soul witch, the witch that deals with uh, energy of soul. And my uh, symbol would be the crystal, okay? So what would you do to find out if you are that type of witch? Now, this is going to take, and I am not... <laughs> I am not great at doing meditation at all. So I am with you on that if you have trouble focusing because I have ADD. I can't sit still for very long. Um, the best way to do this is to find a crystal, okay? One that has not been used, a brand new crystal, one that has not been used by anybody before. So you hold it in your hand and you concentrate. Clear your mind and you concentrate. And you feel... If the crystal feels, and I know, you know, the, the palm warm, warms it up, which is why it's better to start with something that maybe has, uh, like, granite on the back of it, like the amethyst does. So you put your hand here, and you feel it, and you feel it. You kind of keep it very light. Keep your fingers very light, because you don't want to create heat on this. You have to feel, if you can feel some heat generating out of it, if you feel some energy generating out of it, and if you do feel that, try to pull it into you. No matter how um, weak that energy may be, you try to pull it into you. If you're actually able to feel that you can pull that energy, you can feel energy off of this, pull that into it, that is a good indicator that you are going to be uh, like an energy witch, okay? So now, now this, you have to do this with all of these. You can't just do it, you just, if you have you know, success with that, you'd be like, oh, well, that's what I am. No, you have to find, you have to do this with all of these elements. Okay. Because while you may be, may, may be able to pull energy off that, it might actually be stronger with an, another element. Okay. So that means that you can cross into those other things. Just like I said, I can pull energy from the earth. I can pull energy from the air, but I'm not an air witch. I'm not an earth witch. I am an energy. Well, I call myself an energy vampire, but I am an energy witch. Okay. So the next thing is the water. Water is the next symbol on the wheel. Okay. What you need running water. You need live water. You can't take a glass of spring water and dunk your fingers in it. Not going to work. Okay. So if you don't have like a little tabletop fountain, um, then, uh, go to a place that has a fountain go to a place that has like a little waterfall or stream, you know, it has to be moving living water. Okay. Um, and this is a, this is a good exercise to do like three of these things, possibly four, you know, depending if they have like, you know, crystals or whatever, uh, go to a state park, uh, go to a beach, um, go somewhere where you, you maybe haven't been, you would like to go. This is the perfect time to do this. Okay. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to sit there and you're going to have to listen to the water. And when you feel that, you know, you've reached like a, a level of Zen kind of dip your fingers into the water. And if you feel the energy of the water, pulsing, you know, flowing around your fingers. Um, or if you're at a fountain, let the, the water drip into your hand. Okay. And if you can feel a little heat from it, if you can feel a little energy, try to pull the energy in. Okay. Um, now air is a little trickier because you can't really touch air. So you're going to have to find a windy day, a breezy day. And you have to find out if that breeze is like talking to you. If while you're sitting there, not only do you feel like it caressing you, surrounding you, because what you want to do is you want to call to the air. And I know this sounds like really, you know, like out there, like trippy, hippie stuff. But if this is your true element, it will make sense. Okay. So you kind of have to call to the breeze to surround you. Um, feel the power and the energy of the breeze that surrounds you. And uh, if you do feel that power, if you do feel that energy, 
then you can try to ask not not so much to draw the energy in because it creates its own energy but um try to see if the the wind speaks to you if the wind is calling to you um that is what you're where you're supposed to derive your powers from okay i know this isn't easy and i don't know if i'm explaining it the right way but let me tell you something if that's your true element you will absolutely understand what I'm talking about. You'll understand what I was saying about it, how it calls to you, how it speaks to you, how that energy is there. You can feel that energy. So that's why you have to try all five of these things. Okay. So the next one, now this is sand I got when I was on my trip to Hawaii. Love Hawaii. Um, wish I could go back there, but, um, this is very special sand. I use this very sparingly because I don't know if I'll ever be able to get Hawaiian sand again. But because I love Hawaii so much, this is like specially charged. Um, but you, you find dirt, find sand, find any piece of the earth, okay? Um, you can find grass, you can find moss. Um, my best advice to you is to take your hand and kind of bury it. Bury it into, like dig it into the earth, bury it. In, underneath the sand and try to feel the energy from it if you feel the energy pull it up and see if that energy is speaking to you if it's calling to you so the next one is fire so I use this to represent fire now if you have you may have gone out and, and again you know with the wand again um, if you have already gone out and purchased some items uh, this is the wand is representation for air. So if you hold your wand and you feel that power coming from the air, you can try to draw it in to your, um, your wand. But if you don't have it, that's fine. You're really not missing out of where we are, uh, on this so far. Um, because again, you're trying to discover what type of witch you are. Um, and if you, if you have not bought, you know, some of these tools yet, that's fine because, uh, when you find your element, then that is going to be your special thing. So I'm not, I am not an air witch. Um, so wands to me are decorative items, but, um, you do need some, if you are working as a necromantic, witch, you do need either this or this. Um, to help you in your magic and I feel closer to the energy of fire than I do for the energy of air even though I don't derive any power from fire I do feel um, more comfortable using this blade uh, for everything that I need to do so this um, this is a, a representative of the symbol of fire if you don't you you would actually have to have the candle anyway uh, if you have this, then you would try to draw the power from the uh, candle. But what you're basically going to do is you're just going to light it up. And I should have had paper here because I really don't want this to drip anywhere. And I don't have paper. Wait, I'm sorry, I do. I do have paper. There we go. That work. Okay. So basically, you're going to light the candle. Um because you're actually going to be like focusing, concentrating, I would try like getting like a jar candle, like go to the dollar store, get a jar candle if you don't have one. Um, so that way you're not really kind of have like an open flame in front of you. Okay. Um, because you're going to concentrate, but you are going to have your hands along the side of this. You can either look at the flame and concentrate on the flame. See if you can find some images inside the flame. See if, it changes certain colors for you. Um, and if you do feel that, then if, if you see any of that happening, then try to pull the energy of the fire. I usually try to pull it from here. Or if you have an anthame, then you just don't put the blade in the fire, okay? Um, but you try to, in fact, this is too close for me to do this. Move this back. There we go. So you would take your anthame blade. 
and you would concentrate and you would try to pull the energy from the fire into the blade down into your arm. This is an extension of your arm. Your blade is always an ex or your wand is an extension of you. So you always pull it in and up, in and up. Okay. So, uh, I believe I have covered everything, um, all of the elements that you would have to go through. Do, 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 do. Yes. Okay. So I've covered every, all the elements and everything that you would have to go through. This is your homework assignment for the week. Um, and when we come back, we will discuss, um, the different type of capabilities of each witch, what you're going to find you're going to be more proficient in, um, what your best options are. And, um, after that we can start talking about, and this is, it's a very slow process. You're not going to be going out doing spells right away because if you, if I did skip to that and I taught you that it could bring all kinds of problems because you don't know what you're conjuring up. You don't know, uh, the potential downsides to all of this. Um, trust me, I've been there. I've done that. I've gone out and done the lessons. I, I mean, I, I, I took my lessons and then I thought, I know what I'm doing. Yeah. Didn't work out well. I, uh, <laughs> not only did I get a lecture, but it took a couple of witches working together to clear up the mess that I had made and to, uh, take all of the problems that I have caused off of me to clean my karma off. So trust me on this one. I tell you, you have to go slow with this. It deals a lot with what goes out into the universe, karma, um, being witch is not an easy thing because of the re repercussions that you could bring upon yourself. So just stay with me. I will teach you the right way on how to be a witch, but you can't go out there and just do spells, um, without understanding the fundamental, fundamental blocks and the repercussions that you could have. And also, again, if you are, um, an air witch to do earth magic, um, without understanding certain building blocks and how to assemble certain things, um, you're probably not going to have the luck. It's probably not going to work at all. And, um, it could lead to disappointment. You could just be like, oh, well, obviously I'm not a witch. I don't have the power. That's not the case. Um, we all have certain amounts of powers. Uh, we may not be, some of us actually do need a coven to, uh, help boost our power to manifest certain things. But, uh, for some people that have a tremendous amount of power like me, um, I, I don't really like to be part of a group anyway. So I'm very lucky in the case that I'm, I have sufficient enough power. Um, to be able to do this on my own, but you may find that as we do this, um, you will need that extra power of a coven. And sometimes it's not always easy to find it. Um, that is why if, if you, um, live in a place where, you know, you're, it's not as accepting as Salem, Massachusetts, obviously, um, and you, you can't really get to a coven. Sometimes if you are able to pull, um, magic from, uh, and like an energy magic, uh, from crystals and such. Um, or if you're able to actually pull energy from a couple of different, um, sources, you may want to look into being a necromantic witch. That way, whatever energy you're able to pull, you can have, um, the spirits enact it for you. Um, some people may think that being a necromantic, which is lazy, it's the easy way to do things, but it does take a tremendous amount of energy for me to empower, um, different spirits to do this thing, to do that thing, to do this thing. Um, and I also have to be granted authority by my goddess. Um, she is the one who gives me the energy. If she doesn't give me the energy for the spell, 
I'm not going to be able to do it. She's, she's not sanctioning it. So I do I have to ask her permission. If she gives me the energy for it, then she gives me her blessing for it. And I don't have any problems with it coming to fruition. Um, and that's another thing, too. Um, I want you to start thinking about the pantheons that you would like uh, to subscribe to. One of the easiest ones is the Greek or the Roman. Um, the Romans took the Greek gods. The Greek gods kind of like, you know, they, they were, they had like the major things that they handled and then they had all these like little tasks underneath them. I, there were 12, um, 12 major gods and then they had some, you know, demigods and, and things under that. But the Romans <laughs> took the Greek gods, renamed them, and then they made all these other little gods underneath. I... And this is not a pun. I shit you not. The Romans have a goddess of the sewers named Cloacina. I believe that's her name, Cloacina. Shit you not. Goddesses. So if you're having a problem with your toilet, you just break out your altar and say, Cloacina, help me with the toilet. So the easiest one is the Greek and the Roman pantheon. And they are actually kind of interchangeable because, like I said, the, the Romans took the Greek. Um, the only problem with, uh, Romans versus Greek is that you would have to have so many idols or you would have to take one idol and you would have to cleanse it, reconsecrate it for this other deity and then use that. And I'll tell you, reconsecration is a bitch. It's, it takes energy off of you for you to put the intention on it and whether you're able to call that God to you or not, um, is kind of iffy. What I do, what I like to do is I have my main gods, the Greek gods. Um, and then I have like one little idol that will, if I have to reconsecrate it for something like Fortuna, um, I don't normally have Fortuna in my, um, cavalcade. I will consecrate that doll, but I have all my main idols for the main gods that I would beseech. Um, and you could do something as innocuous as a Barbie doll. You can have a Barbie doll and a Ken doll and just like make a little costume for it. That's a little different. Put a toga on Ken, um, whatever. That's all you really need to do. Once you consecrate it, that's what it is. That's, uh, what you can use to beseech and beckon the God and you're done. So, um, again, I'm not familiar with the Asian ones. Uh, you can always, you can go to Ross, get a Buddha statue. Um, Lakshmi, I believe is, I mean, you can go online, you can get these little statues to consecrate it. There it is. Uh, of course there's the Norse and the Celtic gods. Uh, there's a lot less of those, uh, if you are interested in that. I do not know that magic. So I would not really be focusing on that, um, on like beseeching. And, and so when I give you like the building blocks for the, the spells and everything, I use the Greek, you would have to find the counterpart for that and whatever you are using. Uh, Celtic has a lot less, I believe like they have Tara and they have like green Tara, red Tara, this, and each different color of Tara is for a different type of magic. So you could have like one idol for Tara. Um, uh, so that's, you have to figure out what type of witch you are and you have to concentrate on what pantheon you like. Um, now I did talk about a book, um, getting started in witchcraft books. Uh, you can go view that video. Um, there is a very helpful book um, that I did like. Um, it does give you some information about crystals and colors and gods and all this other stuff. So it does, uh, it's a, a good place to, a good thing to look at if you're a beginner witch, uh, just starting out, it gives you a little idea of where we're going on this and what we're going to be covering. Uh, but it, um, uh, it doesn't, completely fill in all the gaps. Now, if you are not able to get that book in or order it, um, then by all means do research online, look up Greek 
uh, Greek pantheon of gods, Roman pantheon of gods, Indian pantheon of gods, Asian pantheon of gods. Look up all these, you know, just remember pantheon um, and see what they have to say. Um, see what they're offering and figure out if that's what's speaking to you. If you, if that's the type of path that you want to follow, um, you can switch paths. Um, you can definitely switch. If you start off with Greek and you decide the Norse gods speak to you more, you can switch from the Greek to the Norse. That's, it's not a problem. Um, as long as you keep to the ideals that you had started off with. So I think that is it for me here. Um, and I will see you next week and we will start discussing what types of which you are. So you have homework to do. Go do that homework and I will see you back here next week. Bye, witches. <laughs>